Good morning. Hi, I'm attorney Gregory Dell, joined today by attorney Stephen Jessup. And today we're going to talk about how much medical evidence is required to get a long-term disability insurance claim approved. And Stephen, this is an issue now coming up right in the beginning of the year. I've been working on a lot of applications. And, you know, when we look at these files, we're always looking at them from how the disability insurance claims examiner is going to look at the file. But when the claimants call us, you know, and they first go to the doctor, they know they're having problems and that's why they go to the doctor. And oftentimes a claimant thinks that if they go to the doctor once and the doctor says, you know, yes, this is what's wrong with you, and the claimant believes that they can't work, that that should be enough. But we know it's not. Mm -hmm. And so in this video I want to talk about what a claimant needs to do to get appropriate medical evidence, make them understand why they need this evidence so that they can start to think like the disability company to put them in the best position to get the claim approved. So talk for a minute about what is the medical type of evidence that a disability company is going to look for when a claim is presented? I mean, first and foremost, it's your records. You know? So depending on what the condition is, that's going to you know, differ as to what a doctors you're seeing, things like that. And I think you know, one of the pitfalls we see a lot is someone starts experiencing a problem, say from a chronic pain perspective, back issues, they go meet with their primary care physician. Um, and that primary care may say, listen, you need a referral out or refer you to you know, a specialist to take a look, whatever the case may be. And sometimes you'll see that people will, will file for disability prior to getting to the specialist. They don't really have any type of diagnosis hashed out. So medical records and a series of it. If it's a chronic condition, it's going to be something where realistically the insurance company is going to want to see quite a bit of treatment, you know, going to the doctors, trying like, you know, like you say, if back problems, you know, if whether or not there's physical therapy prescribed, injections, medication, whatever the case may be, they want to see that you've explored all these different options. And then also they, they see it as the more medical information you have, the more times you've been to the doctor, then the more seriously I think that they take, you know, your complaints. Uh, that you may have. So the medical records are going to be, you know, the key to anything in any one of these claims. And then depending on what the diagnosis you're going on on disability for is, you know, what other things can be done if there are physical issues or MRIs, CT scans, things along these lines. So, you know, if it's a mental health condition, have you been to a, a mental health care provider? Again, some people just go to the primary care and they're waiting to get in with a psychiatrist or a psychologist. So it's, it's a matter of actually showing that there, there's a history of it. And a lot of times people may suffer through it. And you almost have to suffer through it to an extent. Um, you know, except as we discussed, you know, and, you know, pr prior to starting, if you have like an accident or there's something acute that happens where it's clear cut, you know, this is when the disability is going to begin. Well, you know, most of the claims we do are these long-term disability claims, and granted, a lot of our clients do have short-term disability, um, but the short-term disability claims are usually more for accidents or uh, some kind of. Um, a broken arm, some kind of injury where it's going to be quick. Obviously you have many clients that transition from short term mm -hmm. to long term. But the reality is with a long term disability claim, most of the policies we see have an elimination period of 90 days to 180 days, which means that you have to be disabled for that period of time before the policy is even responsible for paying any benefits. And in that period of time, if it is, let's just say, usually the group disability policies have 180 days. Elimination. How often would you suggest a claimant should be going to the doctor in order to have the best chance to get their benefits approved? I mean, you want to see monthly, honestly, because short-term disability, a lot of people, we get calls. Uh, we've said in plenty of other videos that the times you're most likely to be denied are the transition from short-term to long-term or the change in definition in long-term. So a lot of people call us and say, well, they approved my short-term with no problem. Then when it got to long-term, it was no good. Uh, that's all too common. So you can almost get lulled into a false sense of security when a short-term disability claim goes relatively smoothly. You know, we've discussed that in other videos that in a lot of times that's because the actual funding comes through your employer, so the insurance company, it's not coming out of their pocket. You know, it's almost like they don't care as much. Long-term it is. So they're gonna wanna see the evidence. They're gonna wanna see these problems. And like you said, a lot of short-term disability claims may just be that. They never go into long-term. Right. So if it's gonna go into long-term, the insurance companies evaluation your medical isn't just all right is this a month or two thing this is does your condition justify you know that you've been out for six months and you may be out for the foreseeable future um, so as much as you can get in, if there's specialists involved you want to be seeing them 
You know, you don't want like one or two medical records, you know, right. when you're trying to get a long-term disability approved. I think the false sense of security you mentioned is a great point because short-term disability, you can get away with mm -hmm. one doctor mm -hmm. visit. I mean, usually it's a seven-day elimination period. So where else is a person going to go in seven days? You go to the doctor and say, this is what happened. This is how I'm feeling. And if the doctor had, you know, has a reason to believe you, they're going to say, this is what's wrong with you. And they're going to recommend rest. Don't do this activity. Don't do that activity. Long term is a whole other animal, and so you're basically saying you got to go at least once a month, and don't usually rely on just one doctor. Make sure you're going to any specialist that may be involved. And and what about objective testing? What is that, and do you recommend that gets done prior to filing for disability? Definitely. So if we go into that same idea of a chronic pain, any type of pain conditions are usually like one of the leading causes of disability. So say it's a bad back and you're complaining, we'll get an MRI to see if there's any herniations. If you're complaining of pain radiating down into the legs or you know if it's a neck into the arms, EMG and nerve conduction studies, scans that verify why you're having this. Because pain, you know, so, so you could have a herniated disc. But your experience of that pain is, is completely you know, unique to you. It's a subjective right. complaint. So if you're just complaining of back problems without having any you know, objective medical evidence to verify, well, this is probably the root cause, it then becomes a judgment call for the insurance company. Do they believe you? And nine times out of 10, they're not going to believe someone just because they say they're in pain. They want the proof. And even sometimes with that objective evidence, they go, well, you know, it's, it's minimal findings. It shouldn't be resulting in that level of pain. But the more objective evidence you can have, since these cases are always going to be just based on file reviews of medical information, right. you get up in court, that's really what it's going to be. Wait, explain what that is, because you say that, like, a lot of people yeah. don't know what that is. When you say these cases are going to be based on a file review, yeah. what so, is that? So on these employer-provided policies that, you know, most people have, um, you know, say you do end up in court. You're never testifying. Your doctors aren't testifying. And the only thing a judge is going to consider is the written records in the claim file from the insurance company. You know, what you submit to them, what they create, and that's your medical records. And a lot of times the insurance companies, they have rights in their policies uh, to send you out for an independent medical evaluation. Uh, they don't necessarily do it. They can get away and, you know, case laws right. out to that's uh, sufficient that they send your records over to a doctor who's never examined you and say, we want an opinion if there are restrictions and limitations. So. Your, your credibility, your disability claim, realistically, is only as good as that stack of medical records. It's not fair. It's not you know, a personal and warm way to do things, but that's the reality, and I think people need to view it as that. You know, it's, there is a certain level of game, gamesmanship in knowing what needs to be there. In order, like if, you know, with, with Google and how easy it is to find out about everything, you know, if you are diagnosed with something, do some research on it. Like, you know, what type of tests to verify. And then that way you can have more educated conversations even with your doctor about staring the course of treatment and maybe we should try this and try that. So you really need to build up a, a large body of written documentation to support the issues. I, I always say, and you've heard me say this before, that you have to be as messed up on mm -hmm. paper as possible. And people are like, you know, what does that mean? I mean, like, this is like, assume you want to pre present a movie script to a producer. You're writing a script because at the end of the day, that's all that the disability insurance claims examiner is going to see is the script. And if you lose your case and don't get approved and you go through an appeal process and you go to court, the judge only sees mm -hmm. the script. If it's not in the script, it doesn't exist. And so, it's hard to go back in time and talk about all of the days that you were in pain and all the suffering that you were having. And now by the time it gets to a judge and, and the judge is looking over a period of one year or 18 months and there's three doctor's visits, the judge doesn't have a lot to yeah. sink his or her teeth yeah. into. And, and there's just, you've got to have a lot of evidence. So you have to go overboard on maybe seeing more doctors than you ordinarily see. Maybe go for a surgical consultation. Now, another thing is, you know, if the doctor recommends particular testing, do you recommend that the claimant goes for that testing? I would say yes. Yeah. I mean, unless, you know, say they recommend surgical intervention. Right. You're not under a duty to undergo surgery. Okay. But to get to that point, you've undergone the testing for a doctor to suggest that. So, you know, if you got your health insurance, because remember, if, if you're, you know, go out on disability, at some point your employer may be able to, you know, after FMLA and things like that, sever your employment, which can affect your health insurance. So while you have the health insurance, definitely go get the testing. 
you know, to make sure. That way you can rule things out. And, you know, not too many people that I've ever come across in doing this, I mean, I can probably count on maybe one hand in 12 years, really are want to be on disability, right. think that this is it, you know, they'd rather be working. These, these policies, you know, are paying them maybe 60% of what they used to make. Um, they're constantly being harassed by insurance companies. They're relying on an insurance company for their financial well-being. So if you can go ahead and get that testing initially and those things done, and it may steer a course of treatment that provides you with something that allows you to continue working, I think it's in your best interest to go through all those avenues. And then, you know, we, we have the clients too. Um, where going on disability is a tough, psychologically speaking, like I'm not able to work anymore, I'm dealing with these things. So I say give yourself the best chance not only to win the case, but maybe even before you got to think the long-term game of that, like treatment that may be able to help you to keep you from even having to go. And then the other thing, you know, the theme of this video was how much medical mm -hmm. evidence is enough to get approved for disability benefits, but more than 70% of claimants go to the doctors and they get these objective tests, MRIs, the x-rays, the diagnostic studies, and they come back with very minimal or no findings. And you know that that doesn't mean that the person has nothing wrong with them because the doctors will tell you 70% of the people who walk in the door, we don't know the exact mm -hmm. diagnosis, but we don't treat a chart, we treat the patient. However, disability insurance companies evaluate the chart, not the patient. Mm -hmm. And that's the dynamic of why you see, you know, 30% of claims getting approved and maybe 70% getting denied because the insurance companies take advantage of this situation and they only look at the chart, whereas the doctors are looking at the patient. So that's the struggle in these claims. And that's why you have to, in my opinion, do every single thing you can that your doctor recommends from seeing different doctors to testing to everything to say, look, I did everything. Even though you may not be seeing the findings that you're trained to look for, it doesn't mean that I don't have the medical condition that I have that's preventing me from working. So mm -hmm. that's why claimants need to understand how important this medical stuff is. So, you know, we work with the claimants all over the country. Um, we always provide initial free consultation. So if you're someone who needs help with your long-term disability claim, please reach out and talk to Stephen, myself, or any of our disability lawyers. We have a ton of information available on our website, which we encourage you to go to and search. We have videos and information about every single disability company, every occupation, every medical condition. Basically, anything you want to know about a disability claim, we have that information available for you, and we're also regularly updating that information. We do these videos on a weekly basis, which we hope you find helpful, and we encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can get advised of new videos that we've done. Should you need us in the future, we'll be here and we look forward to the opportunity to help you.